The buffer that we make must be able to absorb any incoming pH fluctuation and maintain that pH close to its original level. We hence have two kinds of buffers, acidic and basic buffers, for maintaining the pH at acidic and basic pHs. Let's look at acidic buffers first. To make an acidic buffer, step one is obviously to make the pH of the solution low. Acidic. Let's add acetic acid to water to make an acidic solution. If we have a little bit of hydronium coming into this solution, it can react with ethanoic to form ethanoic acid. But that would cause a significant change in the concentration of ethanoic. And knowing that Ka is a constant, if ethanoic decreases, then hydronium must increase. And if, in, if only we somehow could prevent ethanoic from decreasing, then only can we keep the hydronium constant concentration at a fairly constant level and hence keep the pH constant. To do that, what we can do is to put so much ethanoid inside the solution such that a reaction with ethanoid will not cause a significant change in the concentration of ethanoid and hydronium. Any hydronium that is added will react with ethanoid to form ethanoic acid, which by a molecule as itself is not acidic until it dissociates. And we can add ethanoid not by adding ethanoic acid, but by adding sodium ethanoate. So effectively, we have an acidic solution. This acidic solution has a disproportionately large concentration of conjugate base ethanoate due to the dissolution of the salt containing the conjugate base. As a result, the conjugate base in this case, ethanoate, can mop up trace amounts of hydronium ions to form ethanoic acid without its own concentration being significantly affected. And this is how it buffers the pH against fluctuations. What if we add a base though? The base will release hydroxide ions in water which reacts with the undissociated acid to produce water and a conjugate base, both of which do not contribute directly to the pH. Hence, the acid mops up small trace amounts of hydroxide ions as well. And that is great because we've just created our acidic buffer. Weak acid together with the salts of its conjugate base. And this works because of the reversible dissociation reactions of the weak acids and its conjugate base. For basic buffers, it is the same concept applied the other way. For first, make the solution alkaline by using a weak base like ammonia. Next, add the salt of the conjugate base, for example, ammonium nitrate. On addition of a small amount of acid, the unprotonated ammonia mops it up to form hydronium ions. And ammonium ions, sorry. The concentration of ammonium doesn't increase much, of course, because it is already present in high concentrations due to the salt dissolution. On the addition of a small amount of alkali, the ammonium ions will react and transfer a proton to the hydroxide, forming water and ammonia, both of which do not directly affect pH. Again, and this is how the basic buffer can mop up additions of base. So by the end of this checkpoint, you have learned what a buffer is and how to make one, as well as the mechanisms of which it absorbs small additions of acid and base without significantly altering the pH.